Should we write it to her? Or just write it about her? I don't know, it's kind of hard for me. I just want you to know that you don't have to like perform your emotions for anyone. Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog. A couple of weeks ago, um, my boyfriend and I actually had to put our dog down. She was only seven. We got her when she was about three and a half, maybe four. Um, and she was just the sweetest little thing. I'm sure you've seen her if you've been watching my videos. Um, but she was just honestly such an angel. She was really overweight when we first got her. She actually couldn't even sit because... Um, of how big her belly was so she could really only lay down um, or stand up and just in the first few months of taking her on a walk every day she just absolutely loved it and she lost so much weight and just became really happy and was able to move around really freely and just kind of took to us really quickly um, which can be hard for an older dog um, but she I mean she was just something special and what happened was that she started kind of breathing funny um, she just had like these like short kind of shallow breaths and her stomach was moving a lot and we had to take her in to the vet and she thankfully this happened like before the quarantine and before things got more serious and more businesses were closing down that is one good thing about just the timing of everything but, I mean, again, we'd only had her for three and a half short years, and the last time we'd gone to the vet was only a few months prior, and they let us know that she does have a heart murmur, but other than that, like, she sounds good, she's healthy, she's at a great weight, like, everything about her was perfect. So everything had been good, all, all of her past checkups. Yeah, so we had gotten her allergy medication, just in case, um, you know, that was something that in case that was what she was reacting to. We read a lot about that and um, that didn't help her at all. So the next day, it was Sunday that day, on Monday we took her to the vet as soon as we possibly could and they basically just took her in for an x-ray, came back and said she's not gonna make it. She only has a few months left. Um, her heart is actually three times the size that it should be and her lungs are filling up with fluid and we have some medication that you can give her but it might not do anything and you'll know within 24 hours so it was like holy crap like all of this information just came flooding at us and it was so much to process like she's sick she's not going to live for very long there could be a chance but even with the medication she wouldn't have been able to go on walks she wouldn't have been able to you know um really exercise or play or do anything that she loves to do i mean like my walks with her are like one of they were one of her favorite things to do and they were definitely like the highlight of my days and to know that like that was i mean my boyfriend and i both just started having like a breakdown in the vet's office and that was one of the first things i thought of was like i didn't think that coming in here today my last walk with her was my last walk with her ever because even if she did survive for a few more months and the medication worked she wouldn't have been able to do that with me but you know obviously we wanted to try anything that we possibly could so we bought all this medication for her we got you know the x-rays done and some blood work and things like that and she, I mean, it, it was definitely expensive, like almost $600, but, um, you know, we wanted to try anything that was going to work. And we got home, gave her the medication. She didn't seem to really be doing any better. And by nighttime, she didn't eat her dinner. And, like, she loves food. She never turns down food. She's not the kind of dog that, like, waits around for it. Like, her head is, like, in the bowl before you're even done scooping it all out. So she is, like food and treats and all that are her favorite. We would give her cheese and give her all these other things that she liked and she just didn't want any of it. And that was like a huge personality shift that we were so like uncomfortable seeing. But they said that we would see a change in her in 24 hours and if not the medication wasn't going to work. So they already gave her a dose at the vet's office and it just didn't work. It didn't make her any better. She was just freaking out and the only other option from the vet was to keep her there and hospitalize her and she could still pass away but we didn't want to do that we didn't want to leave her you know somewhere where she was uncomfortable like she didn't even want to be a kennel in 
our house. Like, she hates being confined. She doesn't, she doesn't even like wearing a collar. Like, she just doesn't like things around her or on her at all. And so we knew that, you know, her being alone in, like, a sterile room with other dogs that may be sick, like, that was just not good for her. And there really wasn't that much more that they could do if she was hospitalized anyway. So obviously we took her home and, you know, watching her just kind of deteriorate was not fun. We ended up deciding that the next day we had to put her down and thankfully my friend came through and let me know that there was a service that would come to your home or your apartment and put the animal down there. And like we wanted it to be special, especially because we didn't have any last time with her. We didn't have any you know, any awareness that this was going to happen. So we wanted, like, to keep her as comfortable as possible. Even picking her up, like, to go to the bathroom or to go downstairs, like, her heart was beating so fast. You could hear the fluid in her lungs. Like, it was just honestly so sad. And, like, the only way that I can even talk about this right now is because I've talked about it so much and cried so much and talked to, like, all my family and friends about it. And, I mean, it's obviously still sad, but... I needed weeks to process, you know, before I could talk about it, but the reason that I'm making this video is A, to, you know, remember her, and B, to just, like, commemorate celebrating her. So, like I said, my walks with her are my absolute favorite thing, and what I wanted to do was take her on one final walk and so we got her ashes and we got like a paw print out of clay made for her and it's so cute because some of her fur is still in it and she just had the cutest furriest little corgi paws and I just loved it um but what I wanted to do was take the paw with me um on a walk and it's honestly been really triggering I've already tried to do this like one or two times and I would just like break down and stay inside the whole day and just be sobbing and so I finally think I'm ready to go on this walk and take her with me. <sighs> Even though it is just like heartbreaking, like honestly. Um, but that's just a way of letting her know that she's always with me and that, you know, I'll never be able to <sighs> go on a walk without thinking about her. So that's the first thing that I wanted to do. Because it's been so hard for me to enjoy time outside and to go on walks alone, I've been taking baby steps just by making my coffee and enjoying it on the balcony in the mornings or listening to an audiobook or journaling out there just to get myself kind of used to it again. And the walk that I took her on was very special. We went to the same places that I used to take her every single day and it was really sad, it was really difficult, but I'm really glad that I did that for her and was able to sadly come full circle. The second thing is that the place that made the paw and gave us her ashes actually gave us um, some wildflowers to plant for her um, or kind of in memory of her. And so we're actually going to grab some dirt today and um, plant those as well. There's something sweet about new life growing out of a situation like this so I'm happy that they included these wildflower seeds and we also had seeds for different herbs that we decided to plant and it was really therapeutic to be able to work with my hands and get a little dirty and just kind of reconnect with nature so I enjoyed this more than I thought I would. So it's about 9 p.m. today like when I am okay and I'm not super sad it is it, it becomes sad because I feel like her memory is just kind of going away and it makes me feel distant from her and in some ways I feel almost rewarded for feeling sad and just remembering how great she was because I feel close to her and I feel like she's still living in my memories and of course she always will. It's kind of interesting because like I said I don't want to be sad but then sometimes when I am really sad naturally 
when I think about that later, I'm like, oh, I was doing the right thing. Like, I was grieving how I was supposed to. And it's just weird how, like, these societal expectations basically creep into, like, every part of our lives, no matter how much we don't want to deal with them or don't want to subscribe to their ideas. Do you know what I mean? So I found that to be interesting. Um, but, yeah, I just, I kind of wanted to just zone out and not... Um, do any more today so I'll be making her little altar area tomorrow. I do want that to be special and like I wanted to go into all of these activities being really intentional and really missing her and I don't know if you guys have heard of Gatsby the Corgi but it's a corgi channel on YouTube that my boyfriend and I have been following for years since we had Daisy and we would watch it and kind of like comment on the similarities that they had and so um, I watched a lot of those videos with my boyfriend today and that kind of made me like remember her and remember what it was like to have a dog that was just happy and running around and had fun and just playing. So that's the thing too, it's like I want to remember her as that and even though her days of suffering weren't very long, it was really only two or three days, um, not even three days. And But those memories were still so traumatic and shocking that they still left quite an impression on me and sometimes when I think of her I think of those memories and that's really what... I don't want to do so I want to go into all these kind of like moments of remembrance being really intentional and um, just kind of doing my best but yeah um, for today I just needed to kind of chill out but um, you know grief is hard and it never really goes away like time passes and sometimes it'll be like a day before you think of that person maybe two days but then when you do remember them like everything comes flooding back and you know it feels like you're right there with them, or it feels like it's that very moment that you lost them all over again. Anyways, I don't want this to get too long because I know I'm just kind of blabbering, but <laughs> I just wanted to update you on how my day went, um, and I will get some self-care done and see you guys tomorrow. We also wanted to give her a special place in our house, so we grabbed a picture of her, her favorite bacon-flavored toy, her clay paw print that you saw earlier, her ashes, and we just made like a little area for her um, that is just dedicated to her and won't have any clutter on it or anything like that. And honestly, I'm so glad that I did this because every time I walk by it, it just makes me so happy. Hey, so as you just saw, I set up my dog's um, little table with all of her stuff and with her ashes on it. And this was literally like 10 minutes ago, but as soon as we stopped filming, like my boyfriend and I both just started crying pretty much immediately. And um, I was going to film the rest of the like activities and the things that I'm doing to honor her and I'm sorry that this video is split up over so many different days but I just I have to take it slow because I get so sad and just so overwhelmed and I know it doesn't look like it now but I don't know I guess every time that I've like cried or been upset I've just been that way on my own and I haven't been like oh let me like grab a camera and like vlog while I'm like crying or tearing up like so I can document the tears or like document the sadness like obviously that's just foreign to me and I haven't been vlogging for that long especially when I'm going through like really intense emotional things so that's just not really like in my nature and I don't have someone filming me all the time but I just want you to know that you don't have to like perform your emotions for anyone just let them happen and I'm also not gonna force myself to do all of these things in one day or in one sitting partially because I do really want to honor her memory and that is the most important thing for me but I also don't want to feel like I'm exploiting the situation or myself in terms of what I can handle or what really makes emotional sense for me and so this is just to say that like grief is a process take it at your own pace you don't have to like I said perform emotions or be a certain way for anyone else it's just about you and you being able to get through this so um yeah I will continue everything else tomorrow um 
Yeah, I'll see you then. Should we write it to her? Or just write it about her? I don't know anymore. I don't know. This is kind of hard for me. Or you don't have to do it if it's too hard. It might be too hard for me. I'm sorry. It's okay. If you want to let me know how you did it when you're done, I can do it on my own time now. Okay. I included what you just saw in the video just to show you that everyone really does grieve differently and what is meaningful to you might not be meaningful to someone else and vice versa. So just respect your process and where you are. What I'm doing here is just writing down different notes of memories that I have of her and fun things that we would do together or funny things that she would do and I'm putting them in her treat ball so she used to roll treats out of this ball and it was like a little puzzle for her and now I'm filling it up with these notes so that if I do want to remember her or feel closer to her I can always grab one when I'm feeling low and feel more connected. She was my first dog. She was the best dog and first pet that I really ever could have asked for. Um, and she was such a big part of my 20s. I never thought that, you know, halfway through my 20s I would say goodbye to her. I always thought she would be at like my 30th birthday and just celebrating all these milestones with me. But, um, but she really just taught me about like love and unconditional love and how to really just open up and let someone in and have someone take care of you and what it was like when someone you know was always willing to forgive you or was always giving willing to give you a second chance and who didn't judge you and I know it sounds stupid because obviously I'm talking about an animal and a dog's not really gonna get mad at you but anyone that has a dog or has a pet knows obviously how special they are and how amazing they are and yeah, I mean, she was honestly just perfect. Um, so I'm glad that, you know, I always had fun with her and that we had adventures with her all the time, and that we got to take her hiking and camping and I took her on walks and we enjoyed the weather, whether it was snowy or rainy or cold or windy or super hot, like all year round, we would always be outside almost every single day going on a walk and just enjoying it and taking what came at us and she helped my social anxiety so much too to just not be afraid to go on a walk because she was there with me even though it's not like she could do anything about it but I mean just having her there really helped and so yeah I mean I love you Daisy it's so surreal and so sad but um you're the best and I love you